Good morning. I'm going to start this show uh, by saying first, this is the show I have waited two years to do. It's important. And um, I waited to protect the people I interviewed for the show um, to wait until their cases were adjudicated. And now I have the opportunity to bring this show to you. I also want to put out a disclaimer for anybody who's getting ready to type something hateful. This show, Political Paula, and me personally, Paula Luciano, I do not condone, nor does this show condone, drunk driving in any way, shape, or form. I myself have been a victim of a drunk driver, and I got lucky. I was not injured, but my car was killed. And I think you all, if you knew me back then, about three or four years ago, my husband and I were sleeping soundly in our beds, minding our own business. Our car was legally parked. Um, close to our home, and one of our neighbors got her drink on. She was drunk out of her mind, and she totaled our car. We heard the bang. The police knocked at the door. Your car has been totaled. It cost us a lot of money. We felt very violated, and I do understand and respect and cry for any of you who actually lost human beings due to a drunk driver, someone who did something really stupid, something that they could have avoided by simply walking or taking a cab or just not getting in that car. So this is not about that. This show is not about that because I do feel your pain. I really do. But this show is about something different, and it is about innocent people who have actually been convicted of what we consider drunk driving. And we're going to start with a quiz. There's a pop quiz, children. Let's see if you know the answer. What is DWI, class, okay, driving while intoxicated, right? Driving while intoxicated means basically you are drunk out of your mind. You are unable to put a sentence together. You are unable to safely operate a vehicle according to the amount of alcohol you have consumed or you are high on some kind of a drug and you are deemed unsafe to operate a vehicle. DWI. Let's do another one. DUI. Oh, it's the same thing as DWI. No. You got that one wrong. DUI is driving under the influence. And the only thing that influence and intoxication have in common is that they both start with the letter I. That's where it ends, because the threshold of charging someone with DWI is up here. But the threshold for charging somebody with a DUI, driving under the influence, is way down here. Remember when OJ was like, not guilty of murder in criminal court, but was guilty in civil court? There you go. Think about that. DUI is something that is now the biggest charge made against people. And when you talk about driving under the influence, you can be arrested and charged and probably forced to plead guilty to save your ass with DUI for being under the influence of anything. And I mean anything. You can be convicted of a DUI and have never had a sip of alcohol in your life. This is what I've learned over two years interviewing three different people who have had this experience for many different reasons. We've got one more definition that we have to, uh, to do real quick. Open container. Now, we all know what that is, right? That's an easy one, right? You're not allowed to drive around in your car with an open can of beer in your hand, you know, guzzling it down or a glass of wine in your hand, right? No. Not in some states, Florida. Uh, no. Um, in, in some states, open container is very, very specific, and you can be arrested for an open container violation even if the containers in your vehicle are not open. So you're invited to dinner. You want to bring a bottle of wine. 
You go to the liquor store, you purchase the bottle of wine, and you put it in the seat next to you. And you're driving down the road. Guess what? If you get stopped, you now have an open container in your vehicle. But officer, the seal isn't broken. I don't even have a corkscrew in the car. If it is within reach of the driver, any alcoholic beverage that is within reach of the driver in some states, Florida, uh, you will be arrested for open container. If you have a case of beer in your car and you broke the case down because you don't need the whole case, you're just taking a couple six packs to a friend's house to watch a football game. Even if every beer in the six pack is sealed and closed and the cap hasn't been broken, if the driver can reach it, open container, you're under arrest. Something to think about, isn't it? Wonder if MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, had this in mind when they were trying to save people's lives. Now, as a passenger, of course, I can't have a beer or a glass of wine in my hand because, of course, my husband could reach over and take a sip. That I kind of get. I still don't think it's appropriate because, again, I'm not driving. Why can't I have a cocktail to calm my nerves <laughs> while I'm in the car? I hate being in the car. But you can't. Okay, so we're not going to talk too much about open container, but I thought that would be interesting for some of you to know the next time you go to the liquor store on your way to your friend's house for dinner and you're bringing a hostess gift of a bottle of wine, put it in the back. Put it way, way in the back where you put your luggage. Put it in the trunk if you have a trunk. Put it anywhere where the driver cannot reach around and get it. Otherwise, if you get stopped for even blowing a stop sign or a minor traffic violation, you are under arrest in many states. And, I'm, you know, I'm going to be kind of dropping names here, but, um, you know, there are a lot of states now that have laws that we have no, no knowledge of. So let's talk more about driving under the influence because it's a scary concept. So we all know that... Um, the legal limit for being drunk, for blowing drunk or testing drunk has gotten lower and lower and lower to the point where actually we almost have the point where nobody in this country, no matter how much you weigh or how used to drinking you are, you cannot have one drink after work with friends or a glass of wine with dinner and not end up being drunk. But here's how it works in some states, Florida. Um, if you are stopped for a traffic violation and the officer says to you, have you been drinking? Have you had anything to drink tonight? And you are honest about it because you are like, well, yeah, I mean, I had a glass of wine with dinner. Guess what? You are driving under the influence. You are because alcohol alters your thinking. It is a mind altering, behavior altering substance. So if you have had a sip of a glass of wine or a sip of someone's beer and you turn on the ignition to your car, you are driving under the influence in certain states. Even if you are not drunk, you are guilty. You are driving under the influence. Now, another question. Any of you have high cholesterol or high blood pressure? Uh, do you take medication for high cholesterol or high blood pressure? Lipitor is a big one. Doctor says you have high cholesterol. You are at risk for stroke or heart attack for the rest of your life. You need to take a Lipitor every day with your grape nuts and your coffee in the morning. Did you take your Lipitor today? Did you get in your car and drive to work? In some states, Florida, you are driving under the influence. Because Lipitor is a class 2 narcotic. Yes, it is. Now, we all know the opioids. The opioids, uh, Vicodin, Hydrocodone, Oxycontin, they tell you don't drive while you're taking these medications. You're not supposed to take them for the rest of your life. But did your doctor ever tell you that because you're taking Lipitor, that in some states, Florida, you could be stopped by the police and if by some chance you get end up with a blood test and they find Lipitor in your system you can get charged with DUI 
it's a class 2 narcotic. Something to think about, isn't it? For all you people who assume that every person who has been charged with a DUI is an alcoholic, is a drunk. And trust me, there are certain states, Florida, who do believe, by the way, that anybody they arrest, their officers arrest for DUI, are alcoholics. If you plead guilty to a DUI in some states, and it's, it's not just the state that I've been subliminally sending out to you, it's many states, um, you end up having to, you don't go to jail in many states for first offense. So that's why it is a good, um, it's a good thing for some people, they are forced, even if they are completely innocent, to uh, plead guilty. And they get to go to these alcohol classes, kind of like Alcoholics Anonymous, only they charge you for it. So we're going to follow the money, too. See, when you plead guilty, the state um, not only gets a fine, you pay a fine and all this stuff, but you also have to pay to get well. First offense, DUI. DUI, driving under the influence. Some of the people in these classes that cost about $270 for two classes never drank. They just took their Lipitor with their grape nuts in the morning. But they're in the class because they pled guilty. Because if you get convicted in a jury trial trying to clear your name, you go to jail. It's a lot worse. So the DAs float all these deals that, well, plead guilty and we won't destroy your life you know, forever. We won't force you to lose your job by spending 30 to 90 days in jail and we won't suspend, we won't, you know, take your license for a year. You can do community service, you can go to these classes. Well, these classes are a trip. So, in this class, the first thing the instructor says is 80% of you, and there might be 12, 15 people in the class, 80% of you are alcoholics. And based on your evaluation in this class, you are going to be mandated to go to outpatient drug rehab, alcohol rehab, at $27 per session on you. Follow the money. 80%. Now, you know, some people are raising their hands, well, wait, I didn't even drink. I just took my Lipitor. I don't know why I'm here. Well, it depends how you answer the questions. Guess what two of the questions are? on the questionnaire that will determine if the state needs you to go to mandated alcohol rehab to stay out of jail. Have you ever been jealous of anyone? Do you get angry while driving? Okay, you're my viewers. Any of you answer that question? Have you ever been jealous of someone? You know, your neighbor gets an in-ground pool. Yeah, I'm jealous. Have you ever been angry while driving? Well, have any of you driven recently? I mean, I get angry when I'm not even driving. I'm just a passenger. I get angry. How the hell does that have anything to do with being an alcoholic? But depending on how you answer these questions, you could be deemed an alcoholic by the state, some states, Florida, and you will have to go to as many sessions as they deem necessary at $27 a pop. And it's a state-funded rehab thing. It's outpatient, and the state gets the money, the $27 per session. So there you go. Wow. Take your Lipitor, end up in rehab. Wow. We think there's an op opioid epidemic. <laughs> oh, my God. So the other thing this instructor says the first day of class you know, you guys are so lucky that you got arrested in America. In Bulgaria, this really, this is the class you pay $270 for. When you plead guilty to something you didn't even do, to stay out of jail and to keep your job. If you go to Bulgaria, you get charged with drunk driving. One time in Bulgaria, they execute you over there. Wow. Okay. You're so lucky to be in America. Well, why the hell would I be in Bulgaria in the first place? Who goes to Bulgaria? But just a little message. If you're going to be drinking and driving, don't do it in Bulgaria. Really? This is what I paid $270 for? Fun, fun, fun. By the way, 
if you admit or if you plead guilty to DUI in America, anywhere in America, and you have an American passport, they will put it on there that you have been convicted of DUI. Guess where you can't ever go for 10 years? You cannot go for 10 years if you've been convicted of DUI in America. Canada. Now, remember the hunky prime minister, Trudeau or Trudeau, whatever, every woman in America wants to fuck him? Yeah, him. Remember when he came on TV and said, oh, Trump doesn't want the Mexican drug dealers and rapists. Canada will take them. Come to Canada. He doesn't want the refugees that might have terrorists mixed in among them. They can come to Canada. They're welcome. You American citizens who don't want to live under the Trump regime, we welcome you in Canada. But no drunk drivers, no DUI convicted people, nobody on Lipitor. Maybe it's that national health care thing. They don't want a bunch of Americans coming to Canada getting Lipitor for free. I don't know. But isn't that bizarre? Canada will take just about anybody into their country, except someone from America who's been convicted or pled guilty to a DUI. No questions asked. If you have a DUI on your record, you are not allowed to go to Canada. That was something I didn't know. A little surprising considering the people that Canada will take into their country, but that's okay. Wasn't, you know, again, not planning on going to Canada or Bulgaria, but this is what is going on. Ay, 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 just so much, so much. Um, here is another problem, and I think somebody actually in the teaser when I promoted this show, somebody made a comment. And um, she's shared a blog with me, which I haven't read yet. But there are actually lawyers in some states, Florida, that um, actually make their living simply off of, of representing people who have been accused of DUI. Because there really is no more DWI in this country. It's all DUI, driving under the influence. Which, again, remember, DWI up here, DUI, it's easy. Believe me. You, do, you have one beer, you are driving under the influence. You get stopped, you're going to jail. You're getting arrested. You take your Lipitor, you're getting arrested. There are lawyers who actually do a flat fee. They don't even do billable hours. They just say we will take, they make their living feeding their children, paying for their health insurance on DUIs alone. So let's get down to something that happened that I believe is, and again, I'm not condoning drunk driving by any, any stretch of the imagination, but when I did this, when I've been researching this for two years, and I talked to several people, first of all, there is a, a little pattern. In this one situation, Florida, uh, two different people were arrested by the same police officer a year apart. Same police officer. Both people were stopped for a minor traffic violation, something stupid, not for weaving or committing crimes or doing anything crazy, just a minor traffic violation. Both were asked if they had anything to drink and they admitted they had had a small amount of alcohol. They were asked to do a, a field sobriety test, the touch your nose, walk the straight line. The officer, the same officer, this is why this is important. The same officer in both cases a year apart didn't like the results of the field test, the walking and the pointing and the alphabet and all that shit. So he did a breathalyzer. And in both cases, one year apart, this same police officer's breathalyzer wasn't working properly. They didn't register. They both blew into the breathalyzer and he got no reading whatsoever. It didn't work. A year apart, the same cop. In both situations, both people said, take us to the hospital. We will pay out of our pocket. We want a blood test. We know we're not, we're not guilty of what you are going to charge us with. And in both situations, a year apart, the same police officer who didn't like the sobriety test on the field, the pointing and the walking, whose breathalyzer didn't work, refused to allow these people to have a blood test that they were willing to pay for themselves. 
That, my friends, is a pattern, and it's a scary one. Why? Are there no other crimes to prosecute in some of these states, Florida, like child molestation, rape, murder, beating someone's wife, beating someone's husband? Is there nothing else these people have to do but gun down and go after innocent people and break them down and force them to admit to something they didn't do? In our country, you are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But in many states, when you are arrested and taken to jail for a DUI, people assume right away, even your friends and family, you're guilty, you're an alcoholic. And sadly, over the last two years, I have found that in most cases, sadly, in a lot of cases, that is not the case. It's not true. These people have done nothing wrong. But they have been subjected to embarrassment. They've been subjected to spending a lot of money on legal fees, on fines. A drunk driving case, even if you plead guilty and you just have a lawyer represent you one time, it can cost up to $8,000. If you lose your driver's license, you can lose your job, your livelihood. That's why so many people plead guilty, because a lot of times with that guilty plea, you get a restricted license, which means you can still go to work. You can still earn a living and you stay out of jail. So we need to wonder if mothers against drunk driving, if this is what they had in mind. And here's one other thing, and this show's going long and I apologize for that, but we have to talk about this. And then I have a funny story to end with. There's another uh, quiz. What is WWI? And it's not a wrestling match. It's walking while intoxicated. And in Pennsylvania, in my own town, I had a friend several years ago. He was here from New York doing a play in our local playhouse. And he was at a bar with us. And he was renting a house about three blocks, four blocks from the, the bar. And he knew he was going to be drinking. So he walked home from the bar. And he caught the attention of a police officer, not because he peed on someone's lawn, not because he was being belligerent. He was doing nothing wrong. He was walking home. And he caught the attention of a police officer and the police officer arrested him for walking while intoxicated. Now, sadly, he spent the night in jail. He was charged. He had to pay money. He had to pay a lawyer. And he said to me, do you know what he said? And I think mothers against drunk driving or anybody against drunk driving should listen to this. You know what he said to me? I should have driven. I should have driven the damn car. I wouldn't have gotten caught. I would have made it home three blocks in a car. But I tried to do the right thing. I didn't get into a two-ton vehicle and drive home after drinking several shots and having a nice time with my friends. I walked. My husband and I walk a lot because we don't want to drink and drive but we do want to drink we want to have a nice time <clears throat> and when any municipality any government any police force arrest people for doing the right thing for not getting behind the wheel of a car after drinking when they arrest them for simply walking home on a public sidewalk not bothering anyone that, to me, is the morality police now. Now we are saying we don't think you should be able to go out and drink at all. It's like the smoking. Remember how I like to connect dots? Remember when smokers were kicked out in public and we're like, well, that's okay. And now we're being kicked out of public, too. We can't smoke on some restaurant decks. We can't smoke on beaches. We can't smoke in public parks. You can't smoke on 42nd Street in New York City. Well, now with this alcohol, the blood alcohol levels are coming down. Even if you are doing the while intoxicated, the level of intoxication is a 250 pound, six foot two man can maybe have one beer and still possibly blow drunk. Someone my size, I can't drink at all. I can't have one cocktail and get in a car and get do a breathalyzer and not blow drunk. And that's not because I'm drunk. It's because the limit has come down so low 
that it is almost impossible to not blow drunk even after one cocktail with food. So somebody is out there trying to stop people from drinking at all. Just like they are trying to get people to stop smoking at all. I drink. Some people think I'm an alcoholic and they're probably right. I don't apologize. I don't sneak it. I don't lie about it. I like to drink. I know it's not good for me and I don't care. Okay? I don't care but I don't harm anyone. I don't drive. I don't like to drive. I also have night blindness, so I can't drive at night. But I do walk. And I will be damned if I will refuse to go out and have a few drinks with my friends or even go to a party and get drunk and walk home. That's my right. I have a right to do that because I'm not hurting anyone. I'm not going to wipe out a family of four coming home from the movie theater like some drunk drivers have done. I'm not going to kill some, some innocent men like a woman did a few years ago back here very close to my home. A habitual alcoholic drunk driver killed four innocent men, all of them fathers of small children, going to work. At six in the four or five o'clock in the morning, she was drunk out of her mind and she took them out and she killed all four of them. And she's in jail now. But everybody knew she was an alcoholic. She shouldn't have been driving. But the fact that she could have been arrested for walking, which would have been more responsible and would have saved those four beautiful fathers and their, their husbands. They were fathers and husbands. that They would have saved their lives. But if you can be arrested for walking, why not just try driving? You'll get home quicker. You won't be out of breath. And this is what this man said. You know, I should have just gotten in the car. I probably wouldn't have gotten caught. But because I was walking on this street in a nice neighborhood at two in the morning, the cops, I got their attention. And then they saw that I was a little tipsy and they took me to jail. Next time I'll just drive. Is that the message we want to send? That is a ridiculous law. Absolutely ridiculous. Something else to think about, something to ponder. I'm going to leave you with an interesting story. I want to make sure I got everything because there is so much, so much to talk about. Okay, I got it. Um, okay, let's talk about one more, one more thing. It's called MWI. Anyone ever hear of that one? Well, this is a funny story that came out of the interviews that I did over the last two years. So this dude... In, in some states, Florida, they have very serious laws in their neighborhoods, certain neighborhoods. We were going to move to Florida at one point, and I got to tell you, it was too much hassle. They have these associations, these neighborhood associations, and they tell you what kind of plants you can plant, what kind of dog you can have. You can build a fence. You can't. They tell you what to do, even though you own your home. And one of the laws these neighborhood associations have is... If you are mowing your lawn, you are not allowed to have your grass in the street. So this dude, I call him lawnmower dude, he was on a riding mower, he was mowing his lawn, and the bag fell off, and the grass blew into the street. And a police officer saw it. And he stopped, and he waved, and he, come on. You know, you got grass in the street here, guy. And the guy said, yeah, I'm sorry, officer. My bag fell off. I'm going to clean it up. Have you been drinking today, sir? And, you know, again, this guy, he, he's mowing his lawn, right? He's in his own property, on his property. He's like, well, I had a beer in the house. There's beer in the house. Sir, this dude was arrested for DUI, driving under the influence actually mowing under the influence. So I guess we would call it MUI, M-U-I. He was arrested. I would sue the lawnmower company myself because if the bag hadn't blown off and his grass hadn't blown into the street, then none of this would have happened. But this dude probably had to take one of these classes where he was warned, don't go to Bulgaria. You're so lucky you got arrested in, in this state, Florida. Uh, yeah. Aren't you lucky? 
I mean, seriously. Now you can't have a beer and mow your lawn at the same time. He wasn't even drinking the beer while he was mowing his lawn, which, by the way, many people do. You're on your own property. You're not hurting anyone. You know, the grass wasn't mowed in a zigzag. But the guy got arrested. Just because his lawnmower bag fell off and the grass blew into the pristine street of this beautiful neighborhood where they don't like grass in the street. And you're not allowed to have a beer while you're mowing your lawn on a hot summer day. So, what have we learned today? Well, I hope we've learned something. And I hope the most important lesson that we've learned is don't judge people. If you hear that a friend or a family member or a neighbor or somebody has been arrested for DUI, don't automatically assume they're guilty, first of all. And don't automatically assume that they're an alcoholic either. Because in some states, Florida, and other states around our country, um, there are some district attorneys and some police forces that dedicate their lives to arresting as many people as they possibly can to pretend to voters that they are cleaning up the streets, that they are getting the drunks off the streets. And you know what they're actually doing? Because a really good drunk, a really experienced drunk driver doesn't get caught till they kill someone. What they are actually doing is railroading innocent people, ruining their lives and railroading them into guilty pleas when they are not guilty. Because of fear of putting um, ordinary citizens too stupid to get out of jury duty in charge of their future. All you need is one juror to hate alcohol or to assume that just because a police officer arrests you, you're guilty of something and convict and then your life is over. Or you can just plead guilty and cancel your plans to go to Canada and get down on your knees and thank God that you don't live in Bulgaria or are not planning to go there anytime soon to party. Political Paula, out.